Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Nick uh, for today's tutorial. We're going to be looking at 3D diagramming uh, using a combination of tools. It's all the workflows that we looked at last semester in class, everything from Photoshop to Illustrator to Rhino, are all going to come together uh, so we can make some uh, really nice 3D diagrams. And um, we got the basic setup from before with that little like pavilion file that we used uh, when we did our section drawings um, and that sort of thing. And I'm just using it just because it's something that's relatively simple. Um, but of course, um, you know, you can use any 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 kind of model that you might have, anything from Studio. So this is just just a simple model, not a great design, as we say. Um, but it's all laid out right now with uh, you know layers, uh, you know, for the roof, you know, doors. Um, I got the uh, interior partition wall. Right. Um, I don't. It has a ground layer, but ignore that. There's no. There's no ground. And go ahead and get rid of that. You don't. You don't need to make your own ground. Um, glazing. You know, glass is on a layer here, and mullions and the walls. And you know, this is just good practice for any kind of model. Uh, but you, you definitely want to have things uh, organized so you can turn them off and on. Um, think about you know what you're going to be making diagrams of. You know, and uh, you might want to organize your file um, according to that. But, you know, these are just general kind of things that I think make a lot of sense. The way that my file is set up is all the color um, uh, squares are just black. And I did make materials for things, but they're just basic materials. Uh, I just did, um, basically I went in and I made a custom material and I changed the color. And that's it. And that's what all of them are, except for the glazing, the glass, which is a very, very dark blue with just a like 89%, you know, 90% transparency just to have something um, you know, visible. And your your mileage may vary. I tend not to make my glass really um too transparent so it doesn't show up or too opaque so that it's not really glass, not really transparent. Um okay. So it's just more of a subtle kind of effect. And so so this model set up like that. The other thing that you you you, you want uh to have and we'll we'll kind of go back to some minute here is make sure you got cameras. Every thing that we do uh, to make these diagrams is going to be dependent on things aligning with each other and so we have to have uh we have to have our cameras made uh so if i go to set view you can see i have an isometric view and this could be something that's purely out of going into set view isometric and then using one of these you could also make something more oblique uh, which I showed you guys a few a few months ago at this point um, where we can take one of these isometric cameras and then we can move it in uh, if I look at this in the in, in the four view if I take this camera and I say um, uh, show view sorry uh, show camera where am I at here? Uh, show camera then you can you can move it you know and, and maybe maybe expose more of the of this plane. I was kind of show you. So with with like the gumball here, so you can change the angle, you know, to present a different phase of it. And then if you have the top view again, you could uh, from from a combination of these, basically, you can you can kind of construct what you want. Remember, it's not like a true, it's not a true isometric. Sorry, not a true axonometric view that we talked about in class. Um, but you can with with precision, you know, if you move these things and, and you get this angle right, you can get like um, like a sixty thirty or um, something approximating, you know, or yeah, something like that, or like a, like a 1575. And we've talked about that. So, and uh, if you're, if you're looking for that video, I think it's, a, I think it's under isometric um, drawings or isometric drawings um, on my channel. Anyway, so you build that camera. Uh, and then uh, the other thing that you can do is, um, so that's, that's one view. You can also go in and uh you know make you know just a perspective view that's fine um you know i i like to have a lot of control over my camera but basically just find a view and lock it in okay um and when you when you have a view don't forget you can go to set view go to name views and you can just save it but you've got to start from there okay so so with your file you know you know kind of set up you know based on what kind of diagram you want what we're going to do is we're going we're going to be using the viewport settings in rhino to create different um, uh, layers that we can use to create the kind of diagram that we want. Um, I'm going to show you a bunch of different methods today that are all based on this PDF presentation uh, that I gave in another video. And basically, if you look through these, like the methods that I'm going to show you can be used to generate, I would say, almost every single kind of diagram style, just depending upon, you know, what you um, like mix and match, you know, of these of these different things. Um, 
But I would say that you should be able to produce all of these different types of drawings. Um, yeah, like using the methods that I'm that I'm going to show you. Okay. So let's see. Let's see how well that works. All right. Um, so what this is going to look like is something like this. So this is the file that I that I was just looking at in that particular camera. This is a rendered. Uh, sorry. This is a line view from the viewport in Rhino, but I haven't like rendered it. It's not make 2D, it's just the lines that the Rhino viewport generates um, that you can actually capture. And you can see, if you look at them, they're not too bad. They get a little bit aliased, like they get a little bit jaggy when you um, aren't quite at 100%, you know? But when you zoom in, Rhino does a pretty good job of taking its internal um, like viewport buffer and actually rendering it. It's not bad. What you don't get are different line weights. You just get a uniform uh, uh, weight. And that is something that we're going to overcome a little bit later. But you can see, like, with that, I can do things like, you know, I can make, like, a selection um, on that. And then I can do, like, a flood fill uh, with, like, a green. So I can I can kind of paint this thing. Kind of like what we did in Illustrator. But we're actually making, you know, we're making a selection on this layer, painting on this layer. So I can turn it off and on. You can also make a selection of, you know, the outline um, of this thing. And turn that into like a like a nice stroke. So now I've got a big bold you know outline that I do, and that's all in Photoshop, right? And uh, and then some of the other rendering things that I've got in the computer, um, I can I can add like a bit of like shading you know to it, um, and then I would end up with something you know kind of approximating kind of what what we get from this you know like Brooke Ingalls group um, diagram. Um, go back, sorry, go back to this here. Um, let's see. Or something like, oops, got to adjust these a bit. So something like that, and even something with a little bit of, um, a little bit of shading to it, you know. So just the, the a, a couple of things here that I, that I want to kind of get across is that one is that if you separate these layers that I'm about to show you, you, you could, I think, I hope you can see pretty quickly that you can establish a lot of different, um, styles of renderings, you know, kind of like to, I messed that up there. There you go. Um, to your heart's content, you know, once you've, once you've got these things, uh, you know, separated, uh, different types of shading, different types of shadows, you can kind of mix and match them, um, to, to sort of develop a diagramming style, um, and it's very easy to edit these. Uh, once you've got them, again, you don't have to go into Rhino uh, and completely re-render this thing. You have a lot of control, a lot of flexibility. Um, so it's it's really really nice. And uh, see, you can you can add you know shadows or not. You don't get this kind of control when you're in Rhino, um, and you can't even get this kind of effect. Uh, I, I have to say, like you, you, you can't even layer these things in this way in Rhino. It won't, it won't allow you to do it. So um, this method I'm going to show you, you know, gives you, you know, again, just tons of control um, over this, um, and allows you to kind of build a rendering style. And once you've got it, you know, like narrowed down, you can go back to all your other cameras and just output things, and just and just build build the kind of diagram that you want. But you know, if you're working with a, with a, with your boss or somebody and they're not kind of sure what they want, it's way easier to kind of sit down with this and kind of dial it in with them, you know, uh, rather than to show them a bunch of hard work that you did and have them ha have you completely redo all the styles and stuff. This is just a much more flexible, much more dynamic, um, you know, kind of method. So, um, you know, you can see I can I can add material colors and textures. Um, I can even do some things um, to go to kind of cut in line a little bit here. Um, where, you know, I can create a really stylized, you know, kind of diagram, um, which could be really nice depending upon, like, what you're doing, okay? So I hope I hope that seems, you know, fairly interesting um, at this point. Um, so there's, there's lots of different things. And then uh, the last bit I'm going to talk about. So we did a lot of stuff before um, last semester with uh, Make2D. And I just wanted to show the difference. So, so this is the thing that's out of Rhino, just in the viewport. Okay. So with Make 2D, I can actually get so I have the hidden lines, and I can actually get the silhouette lines if I want them. Um, and that's a little bit gives you a little bit more flexibility um, in terms of lines. 
And what's really nice about this, which I'll get back to, you know, later, is that if I have this thing set up, you know, really well, I can even go in, and this file is actually linked to that other file. And so if I save this file that I've edited in Illustrator, and I go back to Photoshop, it's going to update. So it's super powerful. Okay, so this is where I've been talking about things in terms of, like, computational thinking, computational design, which is that, like, if you understand these things as systems, you know, not just as um, a 3D model or a diagram or rendering or whatever, but you say that you can make these connections between programs and you can create, uh, like, relationships of things that you can change if you need to, um, they become, you know, like, much more, much more easy to use. Um, they save you a lot of time and they give you a lot more options um, as a designer. So anyway, uh, so that's where all this is going. Uh, so um, go ahead, you know, kind of sit tight. We're going to go ahead and get into the second part um, where I'll start to take that Rhino model and uh, like make these layers. Okay. All right. We'll be back in one second. All right. Ready to go. We got our Rhino model uh, back open again. Um, we've got our camera saved. This one's called Perspective, which is a bad camera name. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that um, really quick. Um, and I can just, I could even just call it, you know, click on here, my diagram, or like diagram one or something like that. Give it a better name than that. But at least we won't, we won't get confused between this and the actual perspective, um, uh, the perspective camera. Okay. All right. So I'm in the perspective viewport. You'll notice right now I don't have any grids on, and I don't have um, I don't have a background, okay? And uh, well, and my background is white. We want remember that the images what what we get out of this is actually what we're going to be using in Photoshop from the viewport. So like what we see in the viewport is what we get. So if your viewport's gray, you've got a grid, right? The default you want to make sure to get that stuff fixed. So to turn the grids off, you can just I think you can just say grid. Um, and there's like these, you know, show grid, show grid axis, you know, um, and then enter. Oh, I think that's actually what it is. Uh, anyway, so if you've got that, if, if, if it happens to be in there, you know, you can actually, um, you can actually turn those things off there. Yeah. So show world axis. No, that's another one you want to turn off too. Okay. To get rid of all that stuff, you don't want to see that. You want this viewport to be clean, okay? The other thing that you uh, want to do is if you go into File, Properties, we're going to be spending a lot of time here, so pay attention to that. If you go into the top up here, um, uh, sorry, yeah, you go to Appearance, Colors, and you're going to change the background color to white. I believe by default, it's this, like, gray. Oh, and I might have, I might have some others. Yeah, the, the, I think I might have the backdrop on um, as well. Let's, let's see here if I don't have that. Yeah, so there might be, there might be like a ground plane uh, turned on. So if that's the case, so you definitely, I, I would say do both. So go in, so go ahead and take care of that. Go into your rendering tab and go ahead and I, I just for backdrop, I just do solid color white. A lot of these things are going to interact differently depending upon uh, what we're doing. So just go ahead and set these up. And then um, turn off ground plane if that's something that you have. Yeah, so you can see the difference here. So this is what's actually, I think, yeah, what's actually the background is kind of gray. Yeah, so all those things need to be, need to be turned. You're just, you're basically putting this thing in a giant void. Okay. Don't worry about, you know, what, like, what this is going to do. Uh, it just, this is just the way it's set up. We're still going to have shadows and stuff, but we have to set it up right. Uh, make sure you don't have a sun turned on. We're not going to turn on the skylight, like, right now. We're just going to get, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get some lines out, okay? That's the most important thing. Okay, so everything should be white. We're going to go ahead and change ourselves. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put ourselves in the uh, shaded viewport. So you can see the difference you know, between rendered, has shadows and stuff like that. We're going to go to the shaded viewport. Okay. I'm going to go back to uh, property. I lost my camera too. I got to get my camera back. So we're going to go set view, uh, diagram. We're going to go in and we're going to say um, file properties again. Let's go ahead and change this. I, I messed that up there. Okay. It's back to white. See, look at, the, look at that out there. Okay. And then we're going to go to view and we're going to open it up. 
display modes. We're going to open that up. And this is where a lot of the stuff's going to happen. Okay, but right now we're in the shaded view. And open that up too. Okay, so here's the shaded view. So you can, you can um, right now we're not going to do anything with, uh, we don't have any lights. We're not going to do anything with shadows. This is just the default. And if, if, you've, if you've made any changes to these, they're going to be purple. If it's purple, go ahead and click on restore defaults and take that out. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the shading settings. So this is what the computer uses to decide, you know, what, what color things are by default. We're going to go to single color and we're going to change the single color for everything to uh, white. Okay. So now everything, everything in this is going to be white. Um, and we're going to click on flat shading and you see they turn purple when you change them. I'm going to turn off ISO curves. So now those are the kind of lines that tell you that something is a surface that's been created. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off. Now, this is the, the setting that's actually going to give us the, uh, the um, um, lines, and it's the edge thickness. And you can go in and basically, uh, I just turn it down to one. You can see what that setting actually does. And I will just say, okay, so right now we've got like a pretty, you know, basic thing. And depending upon the kind of diagram you want, you know, this has the nice flat shading, you know, just, just kind of um, those colors and the lines. That's not too bad. I'm going to take a little detour here and say, if you need a quick diagram or something, okay, you go to Arctic. And this is this kind of like fuzzy rendered. You've probably seen this before. Um, you go into Arctic and you go into properties. We'll go to the Arctic thing and we'll edit it. We'll look at that setting again that we had, the edge thickness, and we're going to go ahead and add an edge thickness of one. And then go into the uh, shadow settings and just max out. I think I showed the, you this in another video, but just go ahead and max out the um, settings. And if you capture that, I mean, that's already like, and it's going to be kind of slow updating, but that's already like a pretty nice, just kind of diagram kind of image. There's no shadows or anything like that, but it, it's got depth to it. It's got this nice kind of soft shading. It's got these nice lines just, and to get that out, you just go ahead and go to capture file. And see, here's interesting. You can do what's in the viewport, but my viewport's not that big right now. I can go in though and crank it up to anything I want. Uh, and right now I'm just going to say 1600 by 1200, which is pretty big. And I click OK. And now you can just save that as a JPEG. And that's how we do this, right? So that if you want to do a quick diagram out for Studio, like you, you need to get something out. Um, Arctic is kind of is kind of nice, uh, like for that sort of thing. Um, just to get that. If you've seen that before, that's that's what that is. Okay. All right. End of detour. We're gonna go back and go back to shaded again. Go back into the uh, diagram view again. And we want to get what we don't want is um, we don't want any of this of this kind of of this kind of shading or anything. Well, all we want is basically the um, uh, the lines. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and change some settings here. And if I go into shadows, if I turn I turn shadows off. Oops, I didn't want to get out of that. Sorry. Okay, I go. No, I'm in the wrong one. Go to shaded. Go to shadows. Oh, okay. Shadows are not on. That's good. Okay. Uh, let's go through, just make sure I've got everything shaded. Uh, yeah, just make sure that's turned off too. Okay. Uh, visibility. Let me just make sure here. A oh, lighting scheme. Uh, we're going to say no lighting. Okay. So we're under shaded. We're going to make the color of everything white, you know, single color white. Turn off the ground shadow, turn off, you know, this just for, just to make sure. Turn off ISO curves. If we got ISO curves, we're going to get, yeah, we don't want those. Um, edge thickness of one. I don't like even going deeper because look, these are already starting to get like, you know, like across each other. And then just go to uh, like lighting method, no lighting. Okay. And so now uh, if we go in, I'm going to say uh, capture to file. And we're in this view and I'm just going to say save it. And I'm going to go ahead and make another folder here. So I'm just going to say uh, demo uh, for video. So we just we just keep everything nice. And we'll call these like base lines only. So that's it. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the rest of these because I don't really want them anymore. One second here. And we'll go ahead and save this one. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and open my lines file 
Okay, and that is the base file. And since we're going to be doing stuff with it, I'm going to go ahead and double click on this background layer and just create a regular layer. The background layer is locked by default, and I don't want that. So that's my base layer. That's my lines. I'm going to use that for things. And already, like, um, I can do a lot with that. Um, it's really easy. You know, we talked about in, in Illustrator, you know, um, using the, um, the live trace tool and that kind of stuff. Um, if you're careful and you've got a nice clean model and it came out pretty well, you can, you can get that effect pretty quickly without having to mess with Illustrator. Um, you can just use the magic wand tool. The key though is you have to select the layer first. So you, you magic wand, you know, the things that you want to select. Okay. Um, let's go in here and then you go to another layer that you just made. And then you, you put your color into it. So then I'm going to go ahead and flood fill this. Okay, so now you've got a layer. And then go ahead and make that layer a multiply layer. And that's how you can get, you know, those things in there. And you can you can kind of, if you know what you're doing, you know what you want, you can color things in. Oh, you got to go back to that base layer. You know, you can, you can, you can make, you, you can diagram things. Um, and, you know, depending upon how you want to do it, you can just make things on separate layers. Okay. And then, uh, and let's go ahead and rename this too. Um, just call this uh, baselines to get that effect that I had before uh, with the edge you're going to go ahead and take that layer again and I'm going I'm to magic wand the white space around the object and you may have to like shift click you know shift click will add something to it so if you if you missed an area you can you can kind of shift click it okay you can add that to it but that's not going to actually give us what we want. What we need to do, because that selects everything all the way out to the edge and this edge. So we're going to just take that and invert it. And now we have just this. Okay. Then we're going to make another layer. And we can call this one uh, Silhouette. If I can spell Silhouette. And then to, to get that edge, we're going to go into uh, Stroke. And in this case, I, I've got kind of, I think a four pixel works pretty well. You're going to have to like, kind of uh you know um just, just like try a couple things and i do an outside stroke for this one and then that's going to give you like that okay so that already gets us like a you know pretty pretty chunky like diagrammatic you know kind of thing um very easy to modify those things uh, i'm just going to call this flat uh what i call this uh not live paint i don't know coloring uh coloring fills and so that's that's pretty nice, like right now, just to give us that. You mean, but there's no shadows; it's kind of cartoony. We had to do all the shading, so that's not like that's not very much fun. I don't want to have to like color in every single everything uh, every single thing I see. So maybe that's the next thing we should do. Okay. So if I go in, okay. So how do I get that? I'm going to go back to my shaded thing, and I am going to go back to the lighting settings that we had. And I'm going to go into um, the default lighting. I believe that's right. Let me make sure that this is all right here. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to say default lighting. Okay, and the default lighting is basically that the that the scene has a um, uh, just just like a regular kind of light um, that is sort of overhead, and that just that just gives you that one side is shaded. Um, and another side is is not shaded, and that's it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the um, or go to zero for the edge thickness. Okay. And uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the ambient color swatch here, and it defaults to black. And what ambient color means is basically like what is the like what is black? Is it you know what is the darkest color? Um, and we're gonna kind of tweak that by just going one more down to dark gray. And what that's going to do is actually give us a little bit more contrast between these than we had um, in the like previous one. Um, the other thing you can do, you know, depending upon how, so I guess I'll go ahead and do that. And then the only thing you can do is, um, I might for this one go ahead and turn off the glazing. It depends on like whether or not you want to um, see the like shading on that, because like in this particular view, you don't see the glass as transparent. All right, so like if I go to the rendered view and I turn the glass on, you can see through it. 
I hope that I hope that's clear. You can see through it, right? But if I go to the shaded view, that's not an option. That's actually not something that I can do like with this thing. So what I like to do sometimes with this, it depends on you know uh, like your design. But I'll, I'll go ahead and turn it off. I've already got the lines for it. So if I just outline it, um, that'll be good enough to re to like render it as a window. Uh, and if I want to put that back, I'll, I'll show you how to do that later. So go ahead and turn off that glazing layer if you've, if you've got that. And now we've got what I like to call just the kind of flat shaded layer. And so you've got like just kind of like three or four colors uh, that represent the different faces of things, you know, and the orientation to something. Um, and so this is just good for establishing form. It's not really shadow. It's not based on that. It's just it's just based on there, there being differences between different faces. Uh, it's still useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go say, uh, um, let's see here, go to capture file and settings are the same. And then just go ahead and say um, flat uh, shading. Okay, and let's go ahead and put that into our mix here. So you go in and just say open. I grab my flat shading file and I'm gonna select all. So control A or command A and then control C, control V or you know whatever, copy paste, name it flat shading. And if I go back to multiply here, that gives me like a really nice, you know, kind of definition. If I want some, uh, something a little bit more dynamic, what I can do is I can, I can duplicate this, always kind of duplicate it, uh, just in case you like break something or whatever. I can go in and I like to go into the brightness and contrast and I go to legacy and I'm going to blow out that, that. So it's much more, much darker. So there's almost kind of like a white and black. And that gets me like a really, you know, uh, really, you know, dark, um, uh, you know, really high contrast kind of flat shaded thing, um, which I tend to like. And you can, you know, you can, um, you can add these other things in there. But, you know, that's a certain kind of aesthetic, you know, um, as well. And, uh, you know, I'll sh I, I showed you this example, I think, in the PDF. If we go to... Um, something like this, you know, and this is actually really easy to achieve, like this, this kind of thing. I'll show you. Once you've got lines of a certain color in your Photoshop file, the way to kind of, what I do to add color to them is uh, I will make a layer above that layer. And then I will just go ahead into my color picker and I'll grab some, some color, you know, some kind of obnoxious color or whatever. Um, and then just, just fill this entire thing with it. Um, and then what you can do is you can do like, you can do like screen and then that will actually give you, it's like basically the, this color will be screened through all of the black layers. Okay. Um, and if you've got something you like, um, the problem is, is that as you, as you will start to see, once you start to like manipulate some stuff, um, you might not want everything to be that color or be pink or, you know, whatever, just for, just for giggles. I'm going to show you. So what happens if I do this? Um, lost my color there grab kind of a blue yeah like a process okay pretty cool but if you if you have something like that and you when you want it what you need to do in order to keep it is shift click the you know two layers together and then say merge layers and so those two layers got merged okay and now if i multiply those i can actually get a black line with that if i want to which is which is kind of nice, right? On top of it, and I can do the silhouette. Um, if I wanted to do all three, I would just go ahead and uh, and I put them together, and I would uh, actually I would I would have had to do them all together at the same time. So I'm gonna undo that. But that's how I got that particular kind of effect. And we'll go ahead and leave that out so we can play with that later. So that's pretty cool, right? So we got that. Um, so th so th those are some basic kind of things. Um, what we're missing are, are uh, sort of like the dusty. If we go back to the um, to the example that we had, you know, this kind of shading stuff. I think you know at this point you might have some idea how we do that. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. That's a that's a really fast one. We'll go in to properties again, go into shaded, and we're going to go ahead and keep. I don't even know if we need this. Um, and we're going to go ahead and say for the lighting, let me go back to black. And for lighting, we're going to go to ambient occlusion. Okay. And um, ambient occlusion, I think I need to turn shadows on too, just to make sure. Yeah. There we go. Whoop. 
and we'll go ahead and uh, crank these up. Ambient occlusion is basically like the the shadows that things just kind of have like sitting around. Um, everything, you know, it's just like, especially it happens like where you have a corner or something like that, or things meet each other. It's a, it's a, it's a realistic, um, like light effect. And until really recently, it wasn't something that like a lot of software and hardware like did. Um, but it really improves the realism of things. Uh, and so it became kind of a style and it's also like easy to do, you know, it's like you go just change a box and you go to ambient occlusion. And that's where, you know, and the light comes from the ambient, you know, color. But it really needs to be black or you're not going to get um, much out of it. Um, and then the last thing I want to do with this, though, because we haven't been doing this whole time, is actually to turn on the ground. Uh, the ground is is really, um, yeah, let's make sure that I don't need that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the ground is really important in this case because you get a lot of bounce off of the ground. And that actually uh, creates the connection between the architecture uh, and the ground. And it just, it just, you know, it gives you more contrast in the image. Um, okay. So that, so that's, there's that. So we, if we've got that, just go ahead and click. Okay. Go ahead and go to properties and say, oops, sorry. Uh, go to view capture file. And we're going to save it. And we're going to call this ambient occlusion. You know, and if you don't want that, like the way that, you know, Bjork Ingles, um, has, sorry. Um, you know, if you don't want the ground thing, uh, what you can just do is just go into that. And I can do a version without it too. I just go in and say, um, turn off the ground and then I could just save it as this, just, just the AO from that. Um, and that would be fine too. And in fact, why not do that? So, oops, get ahead of myself here. Go to capture file um let's see yeah that's it and we'll just call this uh ambient inclusion uh no ground okay and we'll go ahead and open these up again i'm gonna select copy select, paste select copy and paste Okay, and the way that these are used, right? We would just multiply them, or something like that. You can you can kind of experiment with with uh, what you want, what you want to do with these. Um, a lot of times, I will I will do like linear color or just multiply. So we'll call this um, ambient occlusion, uh, no ground, and we'll triple click. Oh, I can't do that. Okay, click copy. Paste. There you go. Easy peasy. Okay, so yeah, so with this, you can kind of see what that contribution kind of looks like. We'll go ahead and make this the yeah linear. Oops. Yeah. Oh, linear is pretty dark there. Let's just do multiply. Um. So you can see that gets pretty. So like you don't have to you don't you don't have to stick with that. You can just change the the opacity, right? And that that gives you a lot of control, you know, over that. Um, just 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 take it down like a, a few a few notches, right? And um, you know, then I can then I can add color to things, you know, like I like I kind of had been. Um, so to kind of approximate, you know, that, that Bjork Ingels, you know, effect, I think like I had shown you earlier in the video, you know, make a layer and then just go to, uh, if you've got lots of selections, you don't need to use the paint bucket, just go to edit, fill and use the foreground color. And then you've got that, you've got that in there. Okay. And so I think, you know, we get pretty close to something something like this or you, you can kind of figure out a way to do that but um so that's that's kind of a good a good stopping place um for this but so anyway i hope you you can see you know all the different ways that you can make um these different kind of styles of rendering you know if if you've got and you, you can even layer these to create different effects too you know the different the different kinds of uh, ambient occlusion um effects um and i think um 
you know, just you just have to kind of watch out so it's not um, it's not kind of overkill. You don't want to you don't want to do too much. Um, you just want things to be clear, and uh, you know, I kind of that's that's another communication thing that we we'll spend more time talking about and you'll spend more time in studio is, is it's not just like what you want something to look like, but it's like, why do you want to look that way? Um, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to draw our attention to? Um, yeah. So I do. Yeah. So that's a good stopping point. So that's just, just kind of cartoony abstract, you know, line based, um, diagrams with that kind of fashionable, you know, ambient occlusion stuff, just like, just like Bjork angles. Okay. All right, let's take a break there, and then we're going to start adding some shadows to things, and uh, and uh, we'll uh, keep this train rolling. All right, I'll talk to you soon. All right, we're back. Are you ready? We're going to go ahead and start adding shadows to things. So you know what we're going to do. We're going to go back to File. We're going to go to Properties again. We are going to go. Uh, we're going to go back to the ground, and uh, we are going to go. We're going to keep everything uh, white again. And what we're going to do is uh, go back, no edge. Now the lighting method is actually going to be uh, the scene lighting. Okay, and that is like the lighting that we have actually designed like in Rhino. And I'll talk to you about uh, what that is um, in just a second here. Okay, so just I'm just checking my settings. So we go to shadows, shadows are on, everything's cranked up. Um, that just makes sure that things are things are pretty, are pretty crisp. Um, Actually, that's what I need. I'm gonna take take the crispness out of it. Um, no blurring. So that's you see that like where the edges become like sharper. That's what we're looking for, actually. Like that's actually what we want. Um, edge blurring is intended to create what's called a soft shadow, and I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Like what that is. That's for something where you have a light source that is nearby. And so the kind of photons get kind of scattered by light bouncing off things. If the edges are not blurred, um, that's because it's used, it's a light source that's either very strong. Well, yeah, that's very strong and very far away. Um, and in most cases, that would be the sun. Okay, so what I did was I just, I turned uh, the soft edge quality. Um, there's no soft edges, so down, and then the edge blurring all the way down. And you can kind of experiment with these, but. That's what we're going to do. We're going to crank all these all the way down so we get crisp shadows. And what we're trying to do in this case is uh, we we are going to... Uh, it, so most objects in architecture, especially when you're doing diagrams, would be like a hard shadow and maybe a soft shadow. But the hard shadow at least gives you the, the sense of the thing as an object. Um, it attaches it to things, you know, it gives you a sense of the form. And so that's really important. Soft shadows are nice, but they're just kind of, they just kind of look cool. Um, the real, you know, a lot of stuff happens with just the hard, hard shadow. So that's our setting there. The other thing we can take a look at is if we go into the rendering settings, um, just want to make sure to backdrop solid. Okay. Um, is that like, you don't, you don't have the sunlight system, you know, turned on or anything like that. Um, we're not, we're not going to change that back to one there. We're not going to do that. Um, you can see how the sunlight system, though, now that you kind of know all these terms and stuff like that, you know, that's kind of an ambient occlusion system, isn't it? Um, and the sun is, you can see that crisp, you know, kind of light, you know, and he's kind of interfered. But so the, the sun is like a direct light and the skylight is just like an ambient occlusion effect that the system um, is actually is actually showing us. Um, but we're not going to actually use the, the sun in this case to make the diagram. You could, you could use the sun. You could do, you, you could do a sun diagram. Um, and I realize I should probably talk about that later, but, um, what I do instead in this case is I just want there to be a shadow and I want the shadow to kind of be where I want it to be. Cause I'm kind of looking at this thing like it's an object. I'm not really interested in the sun path or that kind of stuff. Um, I'm interested in it as a thing. And so what I actually do in that case is, um, I do, um, a direct light. If I go to wireframe, you can see this thing up here, and that's my direct light. Okay, and a direct light is is a light where all the rays are parallel and they go direct to the to the target. Spotlight is something different. Like a spotlight is actually a light that has fall off. You see that cone there, and it's going to have the kind of fuzzier shadow and that kind of stuff. It's not really a sun. Okay, and we are not going to not going to talk about these other lights. So if you want to make a direct light. Um, let me go ahead and get rid of this one for now. 
Um, you click on this and you go to the directional light. Okay, directional. And you just click where this light is. Oop, actually, sorry. Click where you want the light to start. It's usually inside of your object. And then you just go back to where the where the light is. And for the kind of shadow that I had, you kind of saw, it, it, I don't want like a long shadow. Not like sunrise or sunset. So I'm going to go ahead and put it really, you know, close overhead. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to put it there. And then in order to see what I've got, I'm going to go back to the four view. Um, and that's my camera view. So I'm not going to, I'm just going to turn the camera off. So I can click on this and I can click and drag. Oh, that's the front view. Um, let's see here. Where am I at? Top view. Yeah. So if I wanted to move the, the, the thing, I could click and drag. Oops. Undo that. I can click and drag the target. And then it's actually gonna gonna get let me angle. I don't think I can actually. I think the light is actually the um, the vector is made up of wherever the the light is and then wherever the point is. And so in order to change the angle, you actually have to change kind of both of them. Okay, so that's what I did. Let me see. And I, you guys can kind of you know mess around with this on your own. Let me go ahead and get this into my custom shaded view now. And so that's okay. So I don't quite have I don't quite have that right yet. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead. And um, for now, I'm going to turn the skylight on because I need to see the shadows. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move this thing around a little bit. And you can kind of see how I got pretty close to what I was doing before. So that I'm just going to let that go. So that's, you know, you can kind of play with that. Try to define the form, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay, let's go back to it. So that's, I made my, it made my like direct light. Okay. And let's go ahead and open it up. And I'm gonna go back, turn the skylight off again. And now I got these really, uh, these really nice, you know, um, sort of like direct shadows. Fantastic. Okay. Um, we're gonna have to do something tricky to get the shadows. All I want are the shadows. Okay. If I go back to the the other file that I uh, I, I showed you at the, at the beginning of the first video. Um, what I want is like this. I just want to be able to turn the shadows off and on. Okay. When we get to some other programs like V-Ray and stuff like that, you can just render the shadows to a layer. And in fact, the, the those programs will automatically render all these layers for you. Which, if you really know what you're doing, like if you think about the lessons from this, if you can figure out what those layers correspond to, you can use those V-Ray layers to also build your diagrams. But I'm not going to talk about that right now. Okay, so what's my trick? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the properties again. And I'm going to go into the shadows. And now I'm going to take the shadow color. And I'm going to make the shadow color this crazy, like, green. Okay. There you go. So I made that really green. It's really just something that really stands out. And I think green's fine uh, for most things, especially because everything's going to be black and white anyway. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go to my view and I'm going to capture the file and I'm going to call this thing Shadow Mask. Sounds cool, Shadow Mask. Okay. Go into my Photoshop once again. I'm going to go ahead and close. It's not cheap. Okay. Go to open my shadow mask, and I am going to do the old copy paste and put this into my thing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, select by color, and if I click on this, and you can kind of click on see like with the fuzzy, you know, just just add it up, and then and then just just increase the fuzziness until everything in the image is selected, and then I say okay, and then I'm going to make another layer. And then I'm going to go to edit fill and I'm going to say black. And so that will give me that. And what you can do with that then, as you can probably figure out, is I'm gonna multiply it. And then if I do that, those are my shadows. I've got like absolute control over that. And if I want to do something really like crazy, uh, I could. I could do that thing, you know, I can actually color the shadows too if I want to. By putting underneath a screen layer of the color. So now I've got a ton of I've got a ton of control. And I can I can really make this thing you know look 
just the way that I want to. And I can even just make it. Hey, it's SketchUp. Looks just like SketchUp. <sighs> no, SketchUp is terrible. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty cool, right? So that's 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 how you get that. Way. It's just a trick because I can't I can't get the shadows out like any other way. Let's go ahead and put that to bed. We don't want that anymore. That is uh that is offensive. Okay, let's go back to this. Okay, and so now we can get we can get that back. All right, so let's go to Photoshop again, and let's name our, th or let's get rid of it. We don't need the mask layer anymore. That was just to get the uh, shadows. And we'll call this, um, uh, like, hard shadows. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer. I'm going to show you a trick. So this is something I like. It's, it's a style. Uh, let's call this, let's call this uh, hard shadows uh, lines. Uh, and this is a, this is a trick uh, that I like to I like to and it's too bad Bill's not with us right now because this is kind of the thing that I think Bill would be into because he likes to have you know white lines on something that is uh, that is dark and so like how do we do that so what I'm gonna do is uh, take this um, actually I think I need to do this I'm gonna make a copy of this layer I'll just call this uh, negative lines so copy my base my base lines layer. And go to this hard shadows layer, and I'm gonna do a control click, and that'll select everything that's that's in that. And then I'm gonna to go to the baselines uh, layer, uh, sorry, the the negative lines layer, and I am going to um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and invert this. I think I'm gonna do this right here, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna press D, and that'll make this black and white, and then I'm gonna flood fill that with black. And so what does that look like? Uh, let's turn all these off here. Let's see here. Um, is that everything? Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> uh, let me think here. I think I did that wrong. Let's let's uh, let's let's go to history again and undo all that stuff. Um, I think I think I did need to go to inverse. Okay. Um, let's see here. Actually, so I'm going to take this and take this thing, and I'm going to invert what's selected. That's what I do. Sorry. Okay. Did I get that? Hang on one second here. Oh, I got. I had the wrong thing. Okay, so uh, the wrong kind of inverse. Um, I, I wanted invert. So if I do this and everything's selected uh, within the shadows, I'm going to go to image, adjustments, invert. Uh. Actually, so that's well, that's kind of cool too. If you like that, you need white shadows. It's pretty darn cool. Uh, but that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's go back and say invert. Yeah, there you go. And then uh, what I'm gonna what I what I'm gonna do to control that is uh, I'm gonna go ahead. So you you could do that. So that's a that's a the shadows are already invert. You can see the white lines. I hope you guys noticed that. Should have noticed right. Should have noticed it right away. Um, if I just want to control those shadow areas and have the other shadows be kind of normal, like not flat, what I can do is I can shift click the shadows layer and I can go to this negative lines layer and I can go to select inverse and then delete all the other stuff. And then, then that's all I get. Okay, so you can see that. So then you get this nice black and white drawing and then you get the lines and then you can go in and you can add, you know, all this other um, all this other kind of stuff to it, if you want to. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that was a little convoluted. So again, what I did was I used this shadow layer as a mask and then I took the baselines layer and I just created an inverse of it in the areas that had shadows. And that's what created the reverse. It's pretty sweet. Wow. Now it's like a comic book. Now it's, I mean, like a, like a good comic book killer okay still with me okay let's add one more thing and then we're gonna we're gonna f use some make 2d to to make this even better uh okay so last thing i'm gonna do is all these are just black and white you know we're not really getting any materials and we just talked about materials this week when we did rendering so let's go ahead and get that stuff back in i'm gonna go ahead and turn shadows off again and in the shaded view i'm gonna go ahead and turn the ground off again and instead of the, of the single color, we're going to go all the way back and we're going to say rendering material. Okay. And I, I think I've got this checked. Um, that's turned off. 
Let's see. That might be all we need, actually. Oh, scene lighting. No, I want to do no lighting, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there we go. That's that's kind of scary, isn't it? Um, And then I'm going to go to layers, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the glazing, too. So that is just, like, color, and I believe it would also be the, like, texture as well, if, if I actually had a texture on some of these things. Okay. Um, let me let me quick double check uh, that setting really quick. Let's go to properties, um, rendering material. Oh yeah, because if it was just the color, yeah, okay. And then with the let me double check the lighting method again. Oh yeah, we don't want any. Yeah, we don't want any of that stuff. Okay, no lighting. Okay, last one out. We're gonna do view capture file. And we're gonna call this uh, material colors. Open up the old Photoshop. Let's open. And we'll go to material colors and select all, copy, paste. And we'll go in and call this one material colors. And then we'll go in and we can say multiply. And so that is a way that we can get our colors in. So there is just like a nice just just kind of view. We can go in and add in the flat shading if we wanted to. You know, depending on the contrast we want. And you can, you know, obviously you can adjust this. We talked about this like all the time. You don't have to have exactly what came out of it. You're you're in control of all that stuff. Put the shadows on it if you want to. Get crazy with the ambient occlusion. I don't need that layer. That's the one I messed up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that gives you a lot of control, and you know, again, you can you can play with the layer types and stuff like that. Um, but that gets you that that allows you to get some materials in if that's what you want. Okay. Um, you can also do a variation of of what I what I showed you before uh, with the mask if you wanted to get something. So, you know, whereas um, I uh, let's go back here. Take out the colors again. Let's take out the ambient stuff. Um, let's just turn all these off here. Okay. All right, there it is. Okay, so um, let's say that you wanted to diagram a particular, you know, kind of element um, in this thing, um, and 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 only that element, or you wanted to have control over it later, or like call it up. Instead of like flood filling, you know, every single thing, uh, you know, using the combination of the the magic wand, and then and then actually filling it, you can go into uh, Rhino. And go to that, uh, you know, layer, let's say the glazing layer, and you use my, my trick and you make this, like, some totally obnoxious, like, green kind of thing. Um, and don't make it transparent. Okay. And then uh, go ahead and uh, output this. So you can just say file, view, capture, file, and we'll just call this one uh, window mask. Let me do something actually before I do that. Um, let's say that the doors were important too. You could do something. So find find a color. I keep doing this today, but like just find find the opposite kind of color. You can make masks for different things. Actually, let's do that too. Let's just go, let's go crazy. Let's just do it. Um, uh, they need to be kind of contrasty. That's a real word. Contrasted enough so that. You can select one without accidentally, you know, you, you need to really have a different, um, they need to, in order to be masks, they need to be st substantially different. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is, um, we're going to go to view, uh, and we're going to say, I keep forgetting to do this file. And we're going to call this a uh, multi material mask. And then we're going to go into um, Photoshop again. And then we grab this file. We're going to copy paste it into the baselines file. And I did something bad here. I should, I did not save my file. I just need to save it as a Photoshop file to keep all those layers. So I'll call this um, uh, my demo. Whatever. Anyway, bad Nick. Bad discipline there. Okay. So we can use this to create these different masks. So I go in and say select 
color range and I, I can sample the green, you know, and just make sure that it's fuzzy enough, you know, that you just like that and nothing else. If it's not, or, or whatever, just I mean, fuzzy or not fuzzy, make sure that you get it selected. Okay, and I can do this, and I can call this a uh, glass. And what I could do is I would I would start by putting in whatever you think is pretty close to you know that color, and then go ahead and fill that with your foreground color. I mean, you can choose the color, I guess, too. So now that's on a layer, and then I can go in and I can go to select color and I'm going to get this and I'm just going to call, I'll make another layer and fill it. Well, what are we going to call it? I'm not sure what color that wants to be because it's not really a color. I'll just make it some kind of red or something. Salmon. Um, and then we'll go ahead and fill it with the foreground. We'll call it um, walls. And then the last one will be the doors, obviously. Let's turn this off here. Go to filter, select. Uh, select. Uh, oh, you got to be on the layer. Uh, select color. Grab this one. Oh, and see, that's where we got to get, I guess, less fuzzy. That's my bad. Okay, there we go. Less fuzzy. Doors. And these I might make some kind of obnoxious orange. down with that uh, fill with the foreground okay and get rid of my mask layer because it's just confusing there we go so if you want that's great you can call that out in a diagram like right there you know if you if you if you want to um, and that or you can have you know added to these other things but that's a way to quickly get elements without having to like select everything um, which is like absolutely crazy go back again to some of these things okay so not too bad um go back and you can say hey, here's the glass and you know if you just wanted to like call out the glass for example if you've got something that's a certain color and you want to change the color you don't have to like reselect it oh this should actually be multiplied that makes it better okay you can go into things and you can say like I want I want to adjust the like the hue or the saturation and and then you 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 don't have to worry about actually uh, doing it much else. So that's pretty that's pretty quick. So that's that's handy, right? Okay, as a way as a way to quickly kind of diagram things. Uh, let's get into this. Yeah, your walls, right? I like that. Looks like we got a little bit of this, this selected here, so you you would probably have to um to deselect that or or take that out. You could, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's a little pink here, but that's okay. And uh, let's go back here. Yep, pretty neat. Okay, so that that gives us you know again it gives us a lot of flexibility in how we can and how we want to diagram this. Um, very cool. Okay. All right. So one more piece. What we're going to do with this next part is we're going to get into make 2D again. We saw some of this, I think, before, and it's a really common technique. Um, this technique, I believe, is a little bit faster and it uses less software. You're only using Photoshop and Rhino. But as you'll see, like the kind of edges of these of these lines are not great. They are a little, little bit alias, a little bit jagged. Um, and um, we only have a limited uh, amount of control over the these lines we can only do like one pixel two pixel three pixel you know we don't have the kind of precision that we had from um illustrator and so i want to be able to get that into these diagrams because that's where you get a lot of control you go back to your like ingles thing here you can see how the outside silhouette has a line weight the inside silhouette has a line weight um and then these have a finer line weight i want to be able to do that with some control okay so one more piece we'll come back uh in a minute and we'll get those lines out stay tuned all right, the last piece of the puzzle here, um, which I think is pretty important because it gives you a lot more control over your diagrams, um, is to actually use Make 2D lines um, through Illustrator to to have lots of control over your line weight, line type, line style, that kind of stuff. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and we're gonna say goodbye to our custom style for this. Uh, go to Shaded View and just say Restore Defaults. Now everything's back to uh, the way that it was. 
Um, everything, you know, uh, we can, don't worry about the materials and stuff. All we need is just things that are organized. That's the important part. And then the fact that we have not changed uh, our camera view. Okay, that's very, that's also very important. I, I moved it a little bit and uh, don't do that. Okay, because otherwise it's gonna, that's gonna mess things up. Okay. Um, yeah, so these things need to be the same. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and do make 2D. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say control A, select all, right? And then say make 2D. Um, we're going to uh, go to this view, maintain source layers, hidden lines. Um, I don't need the silhouette. I think I, uh, yeah, actually keep that, keep the silhouette. Um, view part rectangle and group output. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. So going to go ahead and make those. Very important to maintain source layers, uh, and I'm I'm going with the viewport rectangle. I think I think that's actually gonna gonna be pretty um, gonna be pretty helpful. So let's see. Okay, everything gets made, and then we're gonna go to the top view, and then we're gonna go to select uh, zoom selected. Oh, and the 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 um, the light is selected, so we're gonna um, control click the light to deselect it, and then we're gonna there you go, and then we're gonna say final. Export selected, and I'm going to go ahead and just overwrite this and call this diagram lines. Okay, and we're going to say snapshot of the view and export the boundary. Just everything is fine, just everything just like this. Okay, done. Go to Illustrator, I'm going to open this up, and that looks familiar. Um, I want to say, I forget which one is. Oh, that's the the viewport boundary can go. We're going to delete that. Okay. The viewport rectangle is going to get locked. And then we're going to make three layers to make this easier on ourselves. Um, and one's just going to be visible, hidden, and uh, the you know scene silhouette, whatever you want to call it. And we're just going to grab, so just click the first one. And these are all organized, see, visible, curves, you know, visible, scene silhouette, hidden, whatever. So we're going to grab, click the first one, a visible, shift click to grab that list, drag it into visible here. Take the same thing with hidden, we're going to grab the first, uh, sorry, scene silhouette. First one of this one, down to the last one, shift click, drag it into here. And then we're going to uh, go to hidden, not the viewport, and then put it all into there. Okay, so now we just we just have three so three categories of things. Okay. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and zoom in so we can see what we've got. So just more more or less kind of zoom in so that it matches something that's roughly similar to this. We can always edit it later, and that's what's super awesome about this. But let's start in a good place. So we're gonna click on the little dot, and that will actually select everything on the layer. And this one's at one point, and I might just go ahead and do that, and it's black, so that's fine. Um, I actually don't really mind that right now as a baseline. And then for the hidden layers, I'm actually not going to use those right now. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the, the visible layers, click on the dot to select everything. And these I'm going to take way down, you know, to point, point 0.25. Um, just make super sure that they're in there. And you can see that, you know, it's it's pretty, it's pretty fine. You get a pretty fine line. Now, again... You can go in and edit like all these lines in this in this Illustrator file. You don't have to stick with those three layers. You can there's stuff that you might not like. You know the way that it interprets the the like silhouette. Go ahead and draw those lines. Go ahead and add that stuff to it so you have exactly what you want. You know if this is not complete, go ahead and draw it in, right? Um, if you don't like the way the silhouette's drawn, like go ahead and draw your own. Don't get just what the computer gives you because it's actually not not the best. I'm gonna stop there, but. I expect you and everybody should expect you to to fix this, like to make the lines, you know, what they need to be. Um, but for right now, I'm just I just just have the visible lines and I have the scene silhouette lines. OK, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save a copy of this file. And I'm just going to call I'm going to call my copy uh, hidden only. And I'm going to save it. I just save it as legacy for now. Um, it's fine. Okay, and go ahead and close this, and close this, and I'm gonna rename this one as um, uh, visible only. Same thing here. Okay, 
so it's visible and hidden. And in the hidden one, I'm going to delete these other layers. Uh, I'm going to keep the um, the viewport rectangle for scale purposes. Oh, and I actually have to make these something. Um, so I'll make these make these 0 0.25, uh, 0 0.25. Actually, make them make them really thin just to prove a point. 0.1. So making these lines. Oh, and making them not uh, dashed either, because boo. So look at that. A really, really, really fine line here. Save it. Yes, it's fine. Uh, and then visible only. Um, delete the hidden layer. Just so that I don't, like, confuse myself later. Okay, now we're going to go to Photoshop. And we're going to go to File. Uh, place Linked. And this is like what you guys did when you were doing um, your stuff in um, Adobe InDesign, where you can have linked files. And uh, same thing. So I'm going to start with the visible lines. And crop to bounding box. And just go ahead and put the put that in there and then so I when I what I can do if it's working is I can I can line up that um, that viewport box and it should get if I if I snap it it should be in the ballpark I'm still gonna have to kind of move it with the nudge keys I'm using the arrow keys here to kind of move it into place and it's not gonna be probably perfect but that's not that's not too bad and then when you're done just go ahead and click on click on this thing um, and then once I've got that kind of situated, you know, you can just go ahead and turn off those, those baselines. Oh, and if you turn off the lines, you're not going to have anything behind it. So just go ahead and make a new layer and fill it with white just to add, act as like a piece of paper, um, because you lost your background. So just call this, um, white background. Um, and you know, no one's, yeah. So, um, you know, you might have to nudge that a little bit, but. Um, you you will see that that the that the line quality is a lot better. Like you can get finer lines, and they're not as aliased. Um, let's go ahead and turn the shadows off for now, just so that we can make a fair comparison here. So you can see the different line types, and um, let's just do. I'll move these lines down a bit, so we can turn them off and on again. Oops, there we go. So there's that, and there's that. So this is the uh, this is the ones I, that came out of Rhino, okay? And these are the ones that we just made. So you can, I don't know. I think I think these are a little bit smoother, especially like yeah, see the, these here, a little bit. And of course, you get more, you get different weights and stuff. So you know. It's not just what I showed you here. I mean, you can control all the line weights, and this is the cool part. You go in Illustrator, and I can go here and say, okay, you've done all you need to do. I'm going to get rid of you and then save it. And um, I go back to Photoshop, and that's gone. It, like, updated. Oh, it looks like it moved, though. That's that's Oh, because I changed the bounding box. Shoot. Anyway, well, we can, we can move this. So let's go back to the visible layer again. Um, and just kind of nudge it um, into position. I didn't know that was going to do that, obviously, or I wouldn't have done it. There we go. Yeah. So then we've got oh crumbs. I don't know if I did I nudge everything out of the way. Uh, I must have moved them both. Okay. Well, easily we just select these both and. Um, We'll move them back to where they need to be. Yeah, I think that's probably good enough. Okay. Yeah, so there's there's the lines back. I, I messed that up. Um, and these these lines actually uh, might it might be better like the way I had them. Now that I've got them aligned, um, they might actually be better multiplied from the top. I'm not sure I see much of a difference there, but. Um, and you can, like I said, just nudge them. Sometimes the scale, oop, I nudged the wrong layer. Darn it. I want to nudge this layer. Uh, nudge is just kind of moving it like a pixel at a time. Oh, I did it again. Oh, I see. Yeah, you got to be careful because uh, you might accidentally be moving something that's actually um, underneath something else. You got to make sure that you're actually on the right layer. 
So just just kind of play with it a bit until you till you get what you need. Oh, the other thing too is um because I did the flood fill for those other elements with the other lines, they're they're gonna yeah they're gonna have kind of a jagged kind of a jagged edge that we didn't have before. So you might you might need to do that again, but that's easy. You guys know how to do that. So so all that other stuff applies now that we've got this. And then let's go ahead and just get the hidden lines in since we're doing it. Um, we'll go to uh, place linked and uh, hidden only and same thing. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, actually I think I think I thought of a better way to do that than what I just did. So we're going to go ahead and drag this, you know, again to the edges, you know, where we think we see these things. I'm trying to think about what the hidden lines actually are. Okay, let's just do that. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and nudge it down. Yeah, there we go. Okay, close enough. Um, and uh, oh yeah, look at that, look how nice that is. And then if you if you don't like that background line, we don't have to get rid of it. That's what kind of broke the other one. We're gonna um, go ahead and just make it um, uh, like no stroke. Save it. That's fine. And then go back to Photoshop. Hey, that's fine. So now you've got these nice um, hidden lines, you know, that we can use in things if, if we want them. Okay. So I think at that point, you know, we've got everything back that we needed um, from before. Um, and I think if you look back, you know, just it, not that this is the only way you can do any kind of diagram, but, you know, like, this stuff right here is basically, you know, just the um, just the kind of flat flat shading or like the ambient occlusion, right? Um, and um, you know, this could either be flat shaded uh, with a color mask, or it could be just uh, like filled, like you just use the lines and then just just fill the shapes. That's not that hard to do. You know, line drawings. You know, we got these um, flat color, right, with things. Um, you know, this, this could be just an inverse or something like that. Um, certainly, you know, you can also, um, if you want a wireframe from something, if that's like an aesthetic or something that you want, um, you can go to the wireframe view, um, that's in here and we can modify, we can modify the wireframe view also. So we can go into file properties, go to wireframe. And we can we can turn those like curves off, you know, and 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 go back down these. And you know, maybe you want the the wireframes, you know, in there if that's something that's important to you. Um, but you know, just that, you know, in and of itself, uh, might also be something that you want. That's just very very easy to get out. So we'll just we'll, we'll just we'll see what we get. Call it wireframe. And then um, let's go ahead and open it up. In the wrong folder now. Wireframe. Yep, copy paste. Um, and that's you know we don't have any of the other uh, lines. I'm gonna turn the color off too. Just kind of see what we get and turn the ambience off too. Um, yeah, so you know, you can get different different kinds of wireframe effects. You know, with it. Oh wow! There you go. Kind of like those. Not too bad. Okay. So, you know, again, you've got the pieces. You know, do these kinds of things. You can see. You can experiment with all the other view types and all the settings, like all all the stuff I showed you. Um, and uh, you know, if you get an Illustrator, you can you can have even more control over it. Um. I've kind of talked a lot, so I'm probably gonna stop there. So just you know, take a look through these different styles, and I think if you think about it for a little bit, I think you could probably generate like all of these. Um, sometimes you'll have to actually make. You might need to make these arrows in Rhino. You know, don't make them in Illustrator. Like make them in 3D. You know, you've got the outline, but they'll they'll be in the right perspective or in the right plane, and then you can just go ahead and add. Um, any like color you want uh, or a uh, text or, 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 or lines or whatever, but you can, you can make those in Rhino. Same thing with like, if you've got diagram, I'm missing them here. If you've got diagram arrows for things, um, 
you know, see here's like a, so the, this is an overlay of these of these things you know different layers um like like these kinds of things you know you can again you can draw them in rhino and then use those lines to um make the arrows you know um in adobe illustrator um these projected lines you can make these in rhino and then in illustrator just make them like dasher lines you know and these are just like these this like geometry just pulled out in the z as long as you've got the um um the um um the same camera it's fine same thing with all these here. And, you know, you can take, you can start with this model that you made. Maybe that's where you, that's where you ended up. And then you can always go back and trace this edge and like extrude it, you know, just to make this shape and then um, slice it to make this piece. You know, you, you just, you just, you can make the pieces you need out of the model that you've already got. Um, here's another thing too, like this, this kind of thing, that's really easy to do. Um, we can go into Photoshop. Let's go ahead and turn all this stuff off again. Um, so this baselines. I'm gonna go back and put the silhouette on. And if I if I go into the silhouette layer and I do um actually I think I can yeah, I'll do a um magic wand inside of it. Got another layer. And I can go in and um there you go. Right, so that's that's how you end up with something you know, kind of like these. You do a better job than I did, though. But um, and uh, yeah, you could probably probably even do that. Uh, let's see here. Got to kind of play with the settings for these things. Ooh, fun. Um, yeah. So the more the more you kind of play with those, the more I think you'll get 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 the effects you want out of them um okay let's see yeah a little bit of ambient occlusion you know with these that's another bjork inglis all right so i think that's a good place to end uh thanks for paying attention i uh, hope there's some pretty useful stuff in here uh check the comments for links to some of the different um um styles that i have in each file so in case you're looking for something in particular you can just click on that hyperlink and it should take you right to the place that you need um all right uh looking forward to seeing some cool diagrams and uh everybody be safe later